first, I'd like to thank to the organizers for the opportunity to give a talk in the workshop. Uh, so it's, uh, well, as, uh, as I told you, it's uh, about the finiteness of song representations, but uh, let me just specify it to be crystalline ones. So it's two-dimensional crystalline. <laughs> And it's a joint work with uh, yeah, Professor Don Choi. Uh, so, yeah, let me start from the defining some notations. So, let K be a finite extension, which is actually totally real, so that all the embeddings of k into the complex numbers and complex fields should be real part. Should they all just go to the real part? And then I define a Galois group, absolute Galois group. So let me write it GK. <coughs> and then, yeah, let me choose a prime which is, well, let me just choose it to be an odd prime. And this prime might vary. Usually the even, even primes, it's a different issue. So let me choose an odd prime. And then <coughs> I put QL to be a, the LRD <coughs> field. That is uh, like a completion of Q with respect to the <coughs> Eladic norm. <coughs> um, oh, and one more notation. And I like to select some like finite number of the places. So it, like, that's your finite set of primes in K. And I want it to contain all of the places over L, and also all the infinite places. Uh, then, now we can define the representation of the Galois group. And of course, it's called to be a Galois representation. And I want the uh, ones to map onto the general linear group of our QL bar. And uh, yeah, first of all, you know, of course, the representation should be <coughs> continuous. And furthermore, I want this color representation to have more property, which is so called geometric. So to explain what this geometric means, let me just give start from the example because this one will be used. So let me just start from introducing the Eladic cyclotomic character. Think about the uh, well. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so good. Eh? Mm. Yeah, I can only think of a map from a Galois group over Q in general. This is more general and more more specific situation, <coughs> and so. Always, uh, every so every element here is uh, <coughs> some l to the nth power roots of unity, and every Galois group, uh, every element in Galois group, it maps this one to the some power of those. So <coughs> I'm sorry, maybe I maybe I'm not that good in the <laughs> explanation here. What I should say is that the cycle. Cyclotomic character is defined to be well, this one to this star. And what I should say is that 
every quotient of this one <coughs> will be of this form. And the uh, element in here is chosen to be the and chosen to satisfy that the, the this one. If I just call this XL bar, chi L bar, then uh, uh, yeah, the image of this one is defined to be zeta L to the nth power to the this chi L bar of sigma. This is how this character is defined, and it's, it's actually defined to be the inverse limit of this one. So it's now embedded into. GL1 of QL. <coughs> so this character is uh, the, the elementary example, the, the most basic example of the geometric <coughs> Galois representations in one dimensional case. And uh, furthermore, it has more properties that <coughs> it's first of all for every prime which is not equal to L, <coughs> it's unramified that this prime P <coughs> what it means is that on the every local field there is a decomposition of the local Galois group. So yeah. Uh, every what's the other one? Sorry, I should just put the additional definition here. For any places in V if, after the completion, I only know this one by the completion, and think of this local Galois group, and it always have a decomposition. It has an exact sequence. in this symbol. And this part is called the inertia group. <coughs> okay, so and this unrefined means it is that this high L restricted to the inertia subgroup of each of the P is trivial. And you can also check that the, the, then the image of the Frobenius element becomes L and P actually at P. And it, when it's P equals L, it's crystalline. At L. So this is a good case. And now, so let me define what the geometric actually means in a general situation. So, uh, uh, which one should come first? Yeah. <coughs> so first of all, it should be finite. Uh, it should be unramified. Outside. <coughs> those finite places S. So whenever you bring those inertia subgroup of the places outside S, then the, it should be trivial. So you can only, only those Frobenius sections over there are left. And uh, outside this S part, you can only consider those Frobenius actions, image of the Frobenius over there. Uh, and, uh, oh sorry. And furthermore, I should talk about the level <laughs> or sometimes the conductors are related to this. And what this level means is that then inside, the, for the places inside here, you can always think about the, <coughs> so let IV for each of those be in S. IV the inertia subgroup. of GV. <coughs> and then this inertia level is the open subgroup. 
<coughs> let's say LVR of IV, which satisfies that uh, <coughs> this representation restricted to this open subgroup is either trivial, so it's unreified in here, and it's, it's trivial in here, or I want it to be semi-stable, so <laughs> it should, it's the case when B divides L. But the, just thinking of this as a, just a being good at this part would be enough at this point, because the explanation for this will come later. And then the whole level for R, I define it to be the product of all of those LV <coughs> R. <coughs> so for the geometric representation, these levels are given because it's unreified outside the finite set of the primes. <coughs> and uh, those ramifications actually should stop, stop at the finite part. So. <coughs> and then I need uh, uh, some um, <coughs> so actually this is uh, not included in the definition but it's rather more like a property of a continuous scalar representation so in fact uh, even though the, the, the originally whole image was given to be like that, in fact there exists a finite extension over QL such that this representation factored through GLN of V as an inclusion. So in fact the image is only is actually stopped in the finite extension. So one can, you, one can always restrict this uh, algebra closer to just a finite extension. So I have this information on E, <coughs> which is a restriction on the image. And then I want this representation to have some be hot or in fact uh, it should be drawn. or it's actually nowadays proven to be potentially semi-stable. At the all places dividing L with uh, some given hot state weight. And let me explain what this actually means. I cannot go into the full details, but at least I have to introduce what the hutch tate weight is. So I should somewhat talk about the rings of periods. And let me just talk about the hutch tate rings only and leave the rest as uh, just as an um, open part. So if I define this uh, CV to be, it's like a <coughs> like a complex number so over <laughs> for the yeah elliptic elliptic yeah elliptic fields, and then I define B hat state for this B to be the direct sum of all of the CV tensor actually tensor over QL of this po ice power of the cyclotomic character for all i in this. So it's uh, just like some infinite, infinite direct sum. And then if I call V to be the, those E vector space on which the tree V x via the representation R, and I define dV to be the tensor over QP of this B hatch state with V. So it would come up as a direct sum 
of some modules. For simplicity, usually this is denoted by CVI, and this CVI, so it's like a tensor product of these two and the direct sum for all i's in z. And then there's a natural map. Uh, it should tensor over k of this one to V tensor V hash tate over QL. And if this map is an isomorphism, then we say that that representation R, in fact, the representation R restricted to GV is hash tate. And if this becomes an isomorphism, actually, it was known is that it's uh, already a finite, finitely generated KV tensor E over QP module. So you can you can just single out those parts on where this one actually survives. So the Hodge tate way is nothing but those I's for which this each of those graded parts. are non-zero. So what you can see is that uh, those elliptic cyclotomic characters, it has only one hot state, wait, which is minus one on this definition. So, and furthermore, one can define more rings of period, which is so-called, well, B drum or be crystalline, or be semi-stable. And well, we, we actually call the representation to be geometric when it's, uh, it satisfies this relation with respect to this B drum. So that if I just denote to be the hot state, then you can define the same thing like B dr D drum with respect to this B drum instead in the position of that B hatch tate. And then there will be again a natural map from this B drum yeah. to <coughs> V tensor over QL. And this tensor is over K to B drum. And if this is isomorphic, we call the representation is B drum. Every uh, representation is drum. And same for the crystalline or semi stable. <coughs> so, yeah. With these three conditions, I define what the representation, Galois representation, is geometric. And then Fontaine and Major I guess they are the first one who defined this <coughs> geometric Galois representation. And they made several conjectures on those. So now let me define G to be the set of the Galois representations, which is defined for the absolute Galois group over K. And with those level structure, with the inner, given inertial level, and with the finite set of primes, and let with the Hodge Tate weight. So the Hodge Tate weight is the actually the number given for each of those each of those places dividing L. And it would be a several so kind of a several multi-set of actually it's a set of numbers, not only one numbers. And then I define those 
field E over where it's defined. So this is, uh, and I'll just denote, like this one denote the isomorphism classes of geometric LRD representations are H inertial level L a finite set of points S. And I'll denote this to be well I'll I can switch this to be well drum. Actually this is equal to drum so crystalline or semi stable to denote that the I think of the isomorphism classes of these specific LRD Galois representations. Then what's the conjecture The Fontaine and Major stated? <coughs> is that they made several conjectures. So Actually, the finiteness conjectures they made first is uh, if you fix this K L S H, but no restriction on the E, then this isomorphism classes is finite. And the other version, you may restrict the different one. You may just uh, restrict k, s, and h, but no inertial level. And instead, you fix the, the field E over where the color representation is defined. And they conjecture that it's finite. So those are the analog of the Shafarovich conjecture for abelian varieties. Mm. And in fact, they even suggested the stronger conjecture, which is more famous. <laughs> that are, well, modularity conjecture. is that the <coughs> every reducible geometric and in fact what they originally made there was a well now let me just explain you later a logic representation is automorphic So the classic version is when k equals q and n equals 2. And this automorphy was, in fact, the modularity. But nowadays, they, people generalize everything to the, the higher dimension and the general field k, so that this modularity is now switched to the automorphy. So now, people talk about the automorphy representations instead of modular forms. Uh, okay. And there's uh, furthermore the kind of a, mm, there's a, mm, <coughs> and in fact there are geometric conjecture. <laughs> was a good statement. Well, so, the geometric version is that the unirreducible LRD color representation is geometric if and only if, if it comes from Algebraic geometry. Uh, 
What it means is that it actually comes from uh, some sub quotient of uh, the eta cohomology of some well, smooth project and uh, proper smooth schemes over a field K. So the cycle T character is a simplest example that it actually comes up as a dual of the eta cohomology of a multiplicative group scheme. Uh, and uh, well, there are several developments on the conjecture, especially on this <laughs> modularity conjecture. And in fact, these two are the stronger version for the of the finiteness conjecture because if they are proved, then the finiteness on those uh, modular forms or automorphic representations or those uh, some those varieties they are already shown, I, I guess. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure of this, but the Shafarovich conjecture is proved. So. And so those are proved so that the, they actually imply the finiteness conjecture of Fontaine and Major. So there were huge developments in the uh, modularity. So let me just briefly mention the history on modularity conjecture. because these parts are the main parts that developed in the recent years. But uh, still, the, those, uh, font uh, those Fontaine and Major modularity conjecture is proof mostly only in the case when k equals q and n equals 2. And uh, the yeah, first development, huge development, is of course started from the Andrew Wiles in 1994 that he proved is that he actually proved that uh, all the Galois representations coming from the semi-stable elliptic curves over Q are modular. And actually he proved it with Taylor <laughs> and then Taylor and Bouille, Conrad, Diamond completed the, this modularity of the elliptic curves for whole elliptic curves, but still over Q. But still, this is far from. Uh, there are still some gaps between this one and the modularity conjecture of Fontaine and Major because not all the Galois representation over Q, two dimension, they may not come from elliptic curves. So, so then, then the, the the just time passed, and there were several other conjectures, and then. So called Serre's conjecture, which is a modularity conjecture over finite fields, <coughs> so it's a mod L by the representations. Of course, still the case Q and N equals 2. But this conjecture was proved by Carre and Winterberger in level one case in 2005 and the whole case in 2008. And using this result, um, oops, sorry, I should forgot to use this part. Marquisin in, well, the, I'm not sure of this year, but around 2007, maybe. Yeah, he proved the Fontaine Major conjecture, modularity conjecture. Mm. 
Hmm. But <coughs> there are some restrictions that it's for actually residually irreducible plus some additional conditions. But he, people believe that he covers many cases. For the case and k equals 2 and n equals 2, k equals q and n equals 2. Uh, and uh, recent developments, so in the case and k is real quadratic. Then, well, in 2003, it's 2013, uh, writers, home, six, they proved the generalization of those uh, Tanya Mashimura way conjecture that the uh, Wiles and Taylor Bree Conrad Diamond proved. So elliptic curves over k, they prove that all elliptic curves over k are modular. And furthermore, this Hong, I don't know if it's he or she, but the, this person proved in, his, in the one's thesis that the, for the case and case totally real, elliptic curves, so most of the elliptic curves over k are modular. So you might have some finite exception among those elliptic curves, but that one proved that the, for the most of the cases, they are modular. And for general case, uh, so this is a paper on the analysis of mass. In I'm not sure it's 2000 published on 2000, maybe it's 10. And Barnett Lem Gerati. Toby G and Taylor showed that the potential automorphy for some nice Galois representations. So that uh, for sufficiently large L, so prime should be large enough, so N is E should be greater than or equal to 2 times N plus 1. The totally odd, so that every complex conjugation determinant of this should be minus one. <coughs> uh, and well, oh, there are many conditions, totally odd, algebraic, polarizable. And with regular rate, and with the next try irreducibility, and potentially they use the language diagonalizable, but in fact, it's almost. It, it contains a case when it's a potentially crystalline in the, when the weight is in a nice range. So in this case, they proved they, the Galois representation is is potentially modular, uh, automorphic. So that there exists a finite extension. They didn't prove the modularity and the automorphy for the, the representation itself, but the, there exists a finite extension, which is again totally real, of k 
such that the restriction of R to the Galois group or K prime is automorphic. <laughs> so this is how the, the materials are being developed. And up to the modularity or automorphy itself, they imply the finiteness conjecture. <coughs> But they only show the finiteness of some specific color representations, like uh, up to now, or totally real in n equals two. It only proves the finiteness of those the color representations coming from elliptic curves. And here, it doesn't tell you anything about the finiteness in this in this form. Uh, so the finiteness conjecture. So there was a proof by Professor Taguchi in 2003 about, the, again, uh, some special type of the Galois representation. So he showed that in a more general form, like K being a one number field, and it proved for general N, but the Galois representation required this to be potentially abelian. So after a restriction of this group to its finite open subgroup, then um, then it becomes an abelian. So it's just a direct sum of the character. And he proved that such a Galois representation with respect to with, with those levels and sets and the weights fits, but not the field, is finite. Yeah. So what does it mean the potentially abelian here? Uh, it means that if you restrict R to the, some open subgroup of K, then it's abelian. <laughs> so it's a direct sum of characters. So what I and Professor Choi showed is the case when N equals 2 in K is totally real. But we need an extra condition so that uh, I want um, <coughs> I want the index of this GK. And uh, you can fold it down to the mode L representation for a, uh, after a suitable choice of a lattice. And, uh, then um, would it like a bias maximal ideal, and I, we want the kernel of this one and the, the size of this to be bounded. <coughs> so this choice can vary, but we want some suitable choice to exist, and uh, we want it to fall down, and then. For except finite many prime cell, the set of the uh, isomorphism classes of crystalline Galois representation with K, L, S, H fixed. But I want this one to be open, but I want the index to be fixed. Then what we showed is this is finite. And let me just briefly uh, sketch the idea <laughs> of how the <laughs> things worked out. And uh, here, there's the, here's the reason why I actually explain all of the history of the modularity theorems proved because uh, it strongly relies on the potential automorphic results of this. It's called actually BLGGT. 
this BLGDT paper. It's a, it has a lot of contents. <coughs> so, hmm. okay. The first thing of the residual representations over here. So, yeah. <coughs> It's, uh, it's mapped to the finite field. And if you restrict this E, you can easily check that there are only finitely many residual representations, mode L representations. So we fix the L, H, S, and E. You have only finitely many R bars. And then I have a more barely theorem. It's also in BLGGT. It tells you about the potential automorphy of these residual representations. And then there's a paper on Calegari and G. Which gives you the irreducibility. Of that R bar. And I need an extra condition. But this extra condition is the part that one has to prove. And this is in fact the part why that n had to be restricted to two case. And they actually prove some irreducibility of our bar for the case when n being less than or equal to 5. So n equals two cases included in those cases. Then all of these modularity conjecture and modularity theorems, in fact, most of the parts of the theorem they are divided into two cases. The one part is about the cell conjecture, so that one part deal with the modularity of the residual representation and the, the work that Wiles, Taylor, and Kizin, and uh, many other people, maybe I have only some people there, they mainly did was the modularity lifting theorem. So if the residual representation is modular, then they showed that any liftings of those, nice liftings, are modular. So. And uh, actually, what's in the BLGGT paper, they also proved the, the modularity lifting theorem. So I have a modularity lifting theorem. <laughs> so that uh, combining these results, one can show that every representation that lifts our bar is automorphic. Then, then it's enough to show that uh, once your residual representation is fixed, all the representation lying over there is, is, uh, is finite to show the finiteness result. But that's, that's already <laughs> shown by Hershey and Chandra. And this is the main reason, reason why the, the modularity conjecture implies a finiteness conjecture. And it says that the isomorphism classes of uh, regular algebraic hospital automorphic representation of, well, GLNAF with given weight and level here. I won't explain what it is. It's finite. So combining all of these, all of these results, one can prove the finiteness of uh, such a representation. 
So let me finish my talk here. Thank you.